Good evening, everybody. Welcome to part three of the Carlton 2020 season preview. I'm Terry, and I'm joined as always on the live streams by my man, Dan. What's going on, mate? Not mad. How is everyone? How is everyone? Not mad. Good start. Not bad, yeah. I'm evidently struggling with my consonants today, so not bad. Not bad. There we are. Try again. Respect for wearing the Kobe jersey. Uh, very much like that. Oh, as, as we know, a big Lakers fan. So, yeah, sad times that. Kobe was my, like, teenage years. Gave me a bit the, – probably the last time any of my teams won anything was when Kobe Bryant was rocking for the Lakers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a shocking few days for a lot of people. Um, but, uh, look, Kobe would want us to continue on, and so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, so tonight, part three of the preview, as I said, we'll go through the next five – numbers uh as per the player previews on the youtube channel so if you haven't checked them out please do so i've obviously done the player previews myself so this is an opportunity for me to get your thoughts dan and also you guys watching at home to get your thoughts on uh, the following five players that we're going to talk about um so that's going to be exciting let's let's kick it off with number 11 your man mitch mcgovern as, as people start filing through and as we always like to do um, I'll, I'll put a question up about Mitch McGovern, uh, that being how many goals do you think he's going to kick? So if you're here, hello to you. Let's see where he's come in. Um, and let us know in the comments below, how many goals is Mitch McGovern going to kick? Dan, take it away. What's your boy McLovin going to do? Oh, it's a, it, it, it's a tough one. I mean, I, I don't want to say history will repeat itself, but the last time David Teague was in charge of Mitch McGovern and Eddie Betts, they conspired for 90 goals between them. Wow. So let that sink in. It was Mitch McGovern's best year under David Teague. Um, so, I mean, for me, I know when I spoke to him at the um, at the Best and Fairest, that was something he was excited about, about the rumours about Betts. I did mention that to him, and he did say, if it comes true, it's a huge thing because we, we have a good working relationship. And if you actually go through that Adelaide year, a lot of goals came off tap downs from McGovern. So between them, I reckon they're going to be quite a, an ostentatious pair. So, I mean, I would say, I reckon anywhere around the 30 to 40 mark is what I'd be expecting from McGovern. It's made for him, though, with Kerno missing a good six weeks of the year to really cement that spot, really cement it. Yep, 100%. There is the worry. We spoke about this uh, in the Harry Mackay preview on the last live session. There is a bit of a worry with with me personally uh, in that he's not training with the main group. Now, it's hard when you're a fan the way we are because we're only privy to the information that's given to us and there hasn't really been a reason given why he's not taking part in the match sim. Um, you guys at home, are you worried about this? You think it's precautionary, Dan? What do you think? Oh, I think if you, I, I think it's maybe for me a bit of wishful thinking. Maybe they're just trying to make sure he's in prime condition. I think the way McGovern plays football is very instinctive, and we saw that when he came back from injury last year. That even though he probably didn't have the engine and he was probably a little bit slow and hurting, he just does things instinctively. There's that tackle on butters. There was that mark against St Kilda. He just he's a natural footballer. So for me, conditioning is everything with McGovern. I I mean, for me, if you've got a Rolls Royce, you're not going to show it off every day. So let's just hope Teague's keeping him under wraps because in round one he's going to kick 10 against Richmond. But I, I've got no doubt about McGovern. I mean, he was someone that I was on his case from round one last year. If anyone watched you and me together, McGovern bore Pons Raff every week. Every week. So he's converted me. The, the amount of weight he's lost and his commitment on the training field, for me, he says everything I need to know about the bloke. He wants to play for us. He loves us. He loves the fans. That was something I got out of the conversation. And I think, for me, he's the guy who's going to really impress this year. I've got no doubts about McGovern. I think we're going to see him become a second a second forward, not the third fiddle. I think he's going to start knocking on the Kernel door. Is there a bit of pressure on him to perform given the price tag? And I know 
some people don't like to say the school of, have the school of thought where they talk about, hey, we've paid him so much. Once you get him in the door, he's in the door. doesn't matter what he's paid. Where do you sit with that? As a soccer fan, big money is big money. So for me, I think there is an expectation to perform. If you've been paid a lot of money to do a job, it's it's the fans' right for me to have have that expectation. So I, I do think there's a bit of pressure for him. He's come from a place where he was the third fiddle. He was behind Lynch and Walker. I think there'll be expectation on himself as well to really prove prove it because I know what he said to me. He knew he was home the minute the crowd rose when he took that mark. And he, he said he was disappointed in himself of what he'd given. So to me, that's the sign of a man that wants to pay us back. And I think when this trade said and done 10 years down the track, I, I reckon it'll be good money. Good money. I hope so, mate. I hope so. I'm confident. Never doubt the fat guy. I'm, I'm with him. You've both been on the journey together, so there's something... I, I feel it. Everything he's felt, I feel. So he can kick snags. I know he will. Looking forward to seeing the, the conversation you and him have at this year's Best and Fairest when you're both on the waters. I don't know. I think maybe we'll just uh, maybe cut loose that day, get the pie party pies out and VB. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Moving on, Tom DeConning, uh, number number 12. Uh, we know about Tom, how he missed the last two – well, you know, interrupted pre-seasons in both of the last two years. Uh, he started last year very late, started in the VFL in round 10, and then he played every game bar one after that in the VFL. Didn't feature in the AFL. Um, the, I, I love this this topic. I love the uh, the Tom DeConning discussion. Um, let me start off with you, Dan. What are you, what are you looking at for Tom DeConning this year? I, I really want him to cement his spot. In in the VFL, I want him to be that premier ruckman, you know, really going up against seasoned veterans and rookies alike and really dominate that area, really work on his ruck craft. Because I think he's got all the skills you look for in a ruck. He reminds me that we could maybe start utilising him, maybe not this year, but the next year as kind of like the secondary ruckman. Like Port had a lot of success with Lysa and Ryder someone that can go up top up in the forward line, kick snags and help and do a bit of ruck relief. I don't think he's ready yet. And that pains me. I, I'm a big fan of Tom DeConnick, like a huge fan. And I still say that, but I do think that we need to get some continuity in this game. T Terrence just mentioned, Waldy mentioned it earlier about McGovern. He needs that continuity. I think the same with TDK. I think he needs game after game. A bit like if you read, I was reading about Brody Grundy and he said the best thing he ever had was year one at Collingwood was he was just thrown in at the deep end in the VFL and he was smashed. And he said the best lesson he learned was getting battered by older people. It was his best lesson. He learned more in 40 minutes getting beaten than playing firsts or in training. And I think that's what he needs to do because I think the only thing now is his size. He's got the raw talent. But you look at the big athletic ruckman now, your Lysets, your, your Gorms, your Grundies. These guys are giants as well. They're, they're not just athletic, they're giants. So I, I think he's coming along nicely. We've got to learn from Cruiser. We rushed Cruiser and we're now not really enjoying the fruits of that. He's, he's had a lot of interrupted years. So for me, TDK, just hang fire. He's got all of his career ahead of him. I'm not worried yet. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm not in a massive rush. I mean, I get the sentiment. He's a ruckman. He's a big boy. Um, maybe because Bolton played him when he did play him, it's given us a bit of a, a false sense of, of rush that we have to play him this year. Um, I've said it from the start of the preseason, and I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it. Uh, I'm happy to wait until the end of this year because, for me, if, if we're going to be wanting to contend for finals, I mean, and I love Tom, you know that, but I don't think he's going to be a guy that you can have in a side that wants to contend for finals. He's a guy that you put in a side when you're experimenting, looking to the future a little bit. And that's because I just think, you know, we've got a, a more senior list than what we had back when he did play his two games. And so I think maybe once the season's over for us, um, that's when you'd, you'd be playing him. But again, without knowing what is happening on the inside, without knowing how well he's tracking at training. Obviously, I've been to the open sessions. I've seen what he's done there, but that's really just a small sample size of what really happens at training. Um, it's going to be hard to it's going to be hard to see 
you know, where he's really at. Um, the one thing I do like and I, I actually love is the fact that we got rid of one of the Ruckman on the list last year because, I, think, I mean, look, I get why we had the extra Ruckman last year because we knew Tom was injured and we knew that he'd missed probably the first half of the season. Um, but ultimately, once he was back, having three Ruckman in, in the VFL side just didn't help him at all in terms of his development. So it's going to be good to see when he does play in the VFL it's going to be good to see that he's going to get great exposure there. And, you know, for me, let him dominate for eight games in a row in the VFL. Then we put him in. But that's that's just me. Oh, no, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think that he's got a force. I think he is a little bit like anyone who's replacing Simpson. I, I have the same stipulation with Cruiser. The next Ruckman has to be banging down the door. I, I want whoever replaces Cruiser to force Cruiser into retirement you force Simpson into retirement. You make it a non-questionable that he isn't the best option we have anymore. And I want TDK to have maybe one, two years in VFL and really knock down that door. Make us ask the question, is it still Cruz or is it TDK? He's got Pitternet as well. If you ever see Pitternet play, he's a bully. So it's a great person for TDK to stand face-to-face -face with, someone who's a bully ruckman. He's going to learn the dirty parts of the game. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I like it, mate. I like it. Uh, so for you guys at home, for you guys watching, how many games does Tom DeConning play? Uh, leave a comment below. I'm going to guess that he will play three games at the end of the year. Dan? I think I, I think two. Maybe give him a token one against Essendon so we can kick six so they know what it's like to have a forward like Danaher. <laughs> so we can just say to them, all of our six forwards are better than your one Danaher. Like it, like it a lot. Rate it very highly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along, Liam Stocker, number 13, the international boy that he's almost been forgotten about in a sense because Eddie's back, Jack Martin's in, Jack Noons is in, you know. Um, these forwards are taking up all the news with their injuries. And all of a sudden, Liam Stocker's just, it's, it's allowed Liam Stocker to just focus on what he does best and that's train hard and, and um, and sort of stay out of the spotlight. Where are you seeing Liam Stocker, Dan? And where are you guys at home seeing Liam Stocker? For me, Stocker is our future Ed Kerno. I, pr I predict he will be the muscle and the kind of guy that annoys the opposition moving forward. And when you look at Liam Stocker, when you look at him in, in, in the tack, he was that type of player. He was a very scrappy, very tenacious player. Richmond rated him highly, and that's when I really fell in love with the idea of Stocker, when he hired his own personal trainer to work on this engine to really get everything he could out of his system. And for me, that says the model of the man. He's willing to do them extra things. I remember last year there was all that talk. He'd stay on the track and just run laps. That's the kind of guy we want at this club moving forward. He's willing to do that 1% because that 1% separates you from 14th to 8th. And for me, I expect to see him, you know, play 10, 15 games this year and really cement that thing. We've seen, and I think it's interesting, JSOS last year worked predominantly on Crips. This year, it seems to be Stockers working a lot on Crips. And yeah. we saw what that did to JSOS's game. How good was he at influencing a contest, stifling opposition? For me, Stocker's got a lot more upside than JSOS as a footballer. So for me, Stocker, I think... You may see him be one of them guys who replaces Simpson towards the end of the year, but I do see his future on the ball for Carlton being a real mongrel of a footballer. I'm excited. This guy's delivery as well by ball by foot. If you go down to training, it's probably one of the best at the club. It's in the top five at least. Very good user of the ball. Yeah, he's um, he's very combative. He's a, he's a gym rat. And I remember the parallel that I draw is uh, the Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, Obviously very talented, didn't get a look in for the first few years, but he's, he Stocker reminds me of the guy that if you're ever wondering what he's doing, he's probably doing push-ups at home or he's running laps somewhere. Um, he's just in the gym. He's not he's, does, he's not on social media at all. Uh, I don't see him on Instagram at all. He doesn't have an account that I can see. Um, and so for me, it's like it's just like he's gone into black zone. He's put that black post out up and he's just working his ass off to get into the squad and, He's got that look in his eyes, got that competitive uh, nature in his in his eyes and even in the way he speaks. And 
I really think he's going to pop up and surprise us with how many games he plays this year. Um, I saw him in action, obviously, in the AFL last year, but I went to a game last year after he got injured. It was against Williamstown. And I remember he didn't play the first quarter, came on in the second quarter and absolutely took the piss, just a level above. And so I'm really looking forward to, as you said, maybe playing the Simo role to start with. We don't know where his tank is yet, but I do eventually want to see him be that that midfield bull. Maybe he's the guy that knocks Ed Kerno out of the midfield because of that combative nature. Oh, 100%. I mean, for me, I think he's he, he draws a lot of comparisons. We did the video a long time ago now, but Luke Hodge and him, very similar start in numbers in their first couple of games. Very similar type of player. He moved down to halfback, started there, went to the midfield, went back there towards the end of his career. I see that similarity with Stocker as well. And he's got that Luke Hodge type aggression that, you know, he seems quite jovial off the field. But when he goes on the field, you see he's got that white line fever. He looks like an arsehole. He looks like he's going to have some suspensions this year. And I wouldn't mind seeing it. Well, it's something I said a couple of months ago. We don't have a player that other player, other teams hate. Yeah, You know, like you've got a Toby Green. Stocker, for me, fits that bill. He reminds me of that guy... You play Collingwood. The Collingwood forums are like, oh, Stocker's an idiot. I hate Stocker. I hope Scott Pendlebury knocks him out second quarter. And we need that mongrel. You want that hate figure who we love, someone we love, like Mitch Robinson, who everyone hates. You don't want as a neighbour, but you'd love him as a brother. Yeah. Like, and To me, Stocker's got that mongrel, and I'm excited. I've got – George Stella nails it. Big man crush on Stocker. On your jaw. I like him. I like a bit of stocks. Yeah. I'll say. Love a bit of Liam Stocker. Um, hopefully, we get to see a little bit more of his personality. As I mean, I, like I said, I love the fact that he's a workhorse and doesn't do much uh, of the media, um, stays in, stays out of the spotlight, wants to prove himself on the field first. But I would like to see his story come out a little bit. I just love the international flavour. He's got the perspective on the world. He's been the isolated guy. He's been the outsider. And I think that's going to draw parallel to the way he plays um, this year. I, I think his aim as well this year has to be round three against Essendon, just knock Dylan Shield into next week. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy for him to cop a two-week suspension this year if he knocks someone out. I'm yeah, and, that, and then go and get cocky as well because he ruined my off-season. So, Stocker, if you're watching, take them two out. I'll pay you fine. Yeah, I think we could probably put a petition together and uh, fund a, a, a GoFundMe for a fine. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you can take out the people that I want to come to the club who let me down, <laughs> yeah, I'll pay you fine. I'll, I'll draw up a hit list. I love it. I love it. Um, moving right along, Liam Jones, another Liam. Liam Jones had a shocking run at it last year in terms of injury, unlucky injury, um, and then obviously off-field uh, he lost his mother and, you know, before that he was in incredible form. Talk to me about Liam Jones going into 2020 because I feel like it's a different conversation uh, this time last year because last year was a bit of uncertainty as to where he was at, whereas I'm really confident about him this year. For me, Liam Jones is, for me, he personifies what it means to be Carlton Football Club and he personifies what it means to be a Carlton fan. You've got the courage, that mark he took against the Doggies where he got knocked out. You've got the never-say-die attitude when he played against Lynch and, you know, he kicked two goals early on him, but then stuck to his guns and boxed him out. And you've got the fact that two years ago, this guy was hated by the club. Every forum was Liam Johnson, he's delisting, he's a hack, he's useless, and he's turned his career around. And to be fair, I would say if you're picking the team, he's probably number one or two that you pick. The guy is ever reliable. And to me, that personifies what it is to be a Carlton fan and to play for this club, that you put in the hard work and endeavour and we've got your back all day, Carlton fans. We're blind. We're blind. And I love Jones. And Jones, to me, is just a 20-game year away from All-Australian. I really feel that. Yeah. I feel 20 games, All-Australian. And I think Harris Andrews, for me, is the maybe of the All-Australian. So he he, he 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 could beat him. I, I reckon for me, Jones, wonderful story, absolute rock. Like I feel so assured seeing Wheater in and Jones's name in the team. As soon as I see that, 
I'm super excited. Yeah, I think the other thing as well, and we're obviously going to touch on Sam Doherty next, but having Doc in there allows Jones to play his best footy, in my opinion, because he doesn't have to worry about positioning because Doc's got that positioning under control. Doc's the one orchestrating who goes where, you go here, come back, go. And so I think having someone like Doherty behind Liam Jones as a cover is going to allow him to really fly more, which he already does, um, and take better risks, if that makes sense. Oh, 100%. For me, Liam Jones is is, is the modern-day backman as well. He, he plays loose. He takes chances. He attacks the ball, not the man. If you're going to beat teams like Richmond, you're going to beat teams like the Eagles, you need a guy like this who can literally read the game and take that risk. And what's great having Doc back is we've got that assurance now that if he goes and does that, there's people in place to protect what who he's left. And I'm excited. I, I think Jones, if he can stay fit 20 games, controversially, I reckon he's a, he could be an outside bet for the old All-Australian. Can we fit Walsh, Cripps, Murphy, Wiedering and Jones in the All-Australian team? <laughs> yeah, just just have the whole 22. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just put the whole Carlton team there. No, look, look, I, I do agree. Jones at his, you know, in that those first six rounds last year before he got injured was was in ripping form. All Australian, huge call. And as much as I'd love to see it, um, I don't know. It's just so hard. Um, Come on, it's a Carlton fan channel, bro. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It is, it is. I here. mean, that game against Hawthorne as well. Ten marks, eight contested. I mean, the guy is an animal. Yeah. Absolute animal. Like him and for me, him and Wheatering, that is a premiership backline. When I think now about Carlton, I'm looking at would this team be comparable to a premiership team? I yep. can see Jones and Wheatering premiership Batman. Like it makes sense to me. You and Craig literally, you said the comment and he posted the comment at the same time. He said, Wheaters and Jones have an awesome connection. And and then further to my point about the Doherty situation, in that when he was Whereas, oh, sorry, he played in 2017. Um, you got background there, by the way, background noise. But when he was playing in 2017 and, and obviously got injured, Weedering and Jones had to really learn to play with each other. And I think they've really done that. Um, a good shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. For me, it's good. I mean, we're about to go on to the, the probably the thing I'm most excited about in all of Carlton is the next player. But like Jones, yeah, I mean, that back line, for me, our back line is our big strength. If if we go through our team, the back line, I'm more than happy with. We've got options everywhere and it's an exciting time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> John Allen says, stop talking about Liam Jones. Dan's getting dangerously aroused. <laughs> well, well, the problem is, is we're in February. So <laughs> now, now I get so excited. Football season, I can taste it. Well, I've already started wording Dan up about Tim Taranto for next year, so you wait till we start talking about that. Yeah, it's way too early for me to jump on a train. Tim Taranto looked at my Instagram story the other day, so he's obviously coming to Carlton. Be prepared for that famous me getting excited going, Tim Taranto's coming <laughs> in six months' time, only to cry. Oh, gosh. Um, okay. Last one, but certainly not least, and I said this in my preview and I'll say it again, what a relief to be talking about Sam Doherty as a guy who's going to be playing football again. Um, I've got goosebumps for the fact that I'm talking about him again. He, you know, I, I've talked about keeping a lid on it and he's, you know, he's coming back from an AC, two ACLs and can we not, um, you know, can we not put too much pressure on him? But it's hard. You've been at training with me a few times and those of you watching at home who have gone to the open training sessions, it is clear to see this guy is in the best physical condition of his career. Talk to me about Sam Doherty and what he can do this year. So, I mean, we, we talk about getting aroused, but when we went to that training session and he was just there, breakneck speed, pinging intercept marks, there was probably nothing better than I've ever seen. I mean, we talk about me. You look at the AFL now, the game is from the back built from the back and it's all about meters gained intercept marks tackles and, and literally your ability to rebound 50 now we talk about rory led we talk about lloyd we talk about tom stewart this guy's all them rolled into one like for me 
I we all know I froth defenders. They're my favourite thing. Doc is the best there is. It, he's it. Like, forget your lads, forget your Lloyds. If there's a walk-up start in the halfback line, it's Doc. So, yeah, I can't wait. Like, I'm so excited. Like, I don't want to get too excited because every time I do, I get this horrible text from Carlton Football Club and it says something's happened. But <laughs> I can't help but get excited now that we're only, what, 7.40, only like six weeks away. And, Mate, he, and he's fully training. He's training match sims and everything. Yeah, full contact. Um, and I, I've said this before, um, his ability to hit the short pass out of defence and his ability to take the long kick over his own, he's going to open up space for so many players. Um, just that alone. Like, he's obviously not going to kick goals, but well, he might, but he's not going to kick too many. But... He's going to open up play for us, and his decision making is second to none. Uh, I really, uh, it's like, it's like, it's such an injection of of talent into the side. He doesn't need to average twenty eight possessions a game. I feel like eighteen to twenty possessions a game of Sam Doherty, quality possessions, is enough to have more than what we need in terms of impact. Because it's the talk on the field, it's the positioning as well. Oh, I mean. For me, I see three things about Doc as well. Is that one, it relieves Cripper of a lot of responsibility. Yes. It spreads the load. It's a common thing we see in sport when people have two captains, the captain comes back. It, it takes a lot of pressure off. And Cripper, no mistake, is bearing the brunt on his own. For me, that's it. He's also, we talk, I'm just done the video for Collingwood that gets released tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I talk about Pendlebury, he slows down time. Dog's one of them players that slows down time for everyone else. When he has the ball, it feels like everyone has a bit more time. He's he's so calm. And we saw it last year because all the good teams pepper inside 50. They get panicked and they start rushing kicks. And that's when the turnovers start from a young team. Not when Doc's around. Doc's there, that reassuring head. And like for me, I can't wait to see Doc sneak inside 50 and snag a goal as well. That is going to be the loudest cheer from me next year when, you know, Doc sneaks up, runs, goes on a little run. No one to pass to keeps on going, takes a bounce, bang, goal. Can't wait for it. Yeah. No, so I'm so happy Doc's back. I'm looking forward to the first intercept mark. I'm looking forward to the first tackle, uh, you know, where he pins someone holding the ball. Oh, um, yeah. And to answer Matty Bem's question here, yeah, I mean, all signs show that he's playing round one. He's training, match sim, full contact. There's no, he's not being pulled to the side to do laps mid training. He's, he's ready. So there's he that. He looks good as well. He looks good. I don't want to put too much curb on it, but God, he looks good as well. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And the, the Patrick Cripps um, comment you made is really important because he did a really good job last year. And Pendlebury's spoken about this. All the captains have spoken about this. Your first year as captain, on when you're on your own is there's always a challenge. There's always a little bit of a dip because you're adding more responsibility off field. There's more time management skills needed. Um, so like you said, Cripps has had that, you know, apprenticeship of being captain. Now he gets a guy that comes in and can do an interview that Cripps doesn't need to do or, you know, lead a, a report in a meeting or say something, you know what I mean? So it just relieves Cripps a little bit more, lets him focus on his footy, um, and yeah, again, I, I mean, I can come up with so many other reasons to get excited about him, but uh, I think we've summed it up pretty well. Um, can he make all Australian this year, or is that just a silly question? <laughs> yeah, of course he can. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm not even joking when I say forget your lads and your lloyds. I did my super coach team last week, and he was the first bloody name that came out. That like, yeah. was the first one. Like, I was like, bang, he's captain already. Like, he's there. That guy is 120 super coach points every goddamn week. Just looking at me. Love, Doc. That's Can't cool. wait for him. I mean, how good's our back line, though? Yeah. Because you've also got the question, where's Newman play now? Yep. Like, that is a stacked back line. Tom Williamson is happy. Um, and I guess, yeah. yeah, I guess that probably is a good segue into the next part of the show because that's the five for tonight. So what we'll do is we'll spend five or so minutes if anyone, if everyone wants to do that, uh, answering just some random questions. But let's start with that. Let's start with that back line. Um, 
how do you fit eight? How do you fit eight players who are fit and healthy into six spots? Because I'd argue that Williamson is someone that needs to be playing because he's good enough and he's fit. Um, is Jack Noon's a factor there? Is Liam yeah, is number one halfback? So um, the back six, the competition for spots in that back six uh, has all the depth there and the talent there has all the hallmarks of an elite defence. So uh, how do we manage that? Oh, it's tough because I mean you've also got March Bank as well March Bank. coming back. Yep. I mean, like for me, if I was picking the team now, I'd like to trial Simpson back pocket and have Newman ahead of him because I think the one thing that Newman was struggling with last year was his defensive. He was a bit slack on defence. We know he was good going forward. Sometimes he was caught out of position and that's something Simpson never does. He positions himself well and I'd like to take this opportunity so Newman can lock down that role and I think with Doc there, that's going to help. And mm -hmm. but then we've also, I mean, you've got Plowman the other pocket. He was probably the most improved Carlton player last year. So I mean, for me, that's my back six. Simpson, Jones, Plowman, Doc, Wheatering, Newman. Yep. With Marchbank on the bench or Marchbank? And I think Williamson would have to come through the VFL for me just to get some continuity because every time we bring him in, he gets injured two games later. Yep. So give him five games and say to Newman, you've got to cement this position. Yeah, it's interesting. George says Plowman won't get a game. Well, I think he will, George, because... I had him, I had him back pocket, left back pocket. No, I like, I like Plowman. No, he will. He will. Um, obviously, I've had a good relationship with Lucky Plowman over the over the years. But when you finish, <laughs> you know, when you finish top three in the best and fairest, um, you're obviously doing something on the inside that is greatly appreciated. Interesting um, as well that interview when Cripper won it, and he said it's not a surprise to anyone at the club because he's the top three hardest worker at the club. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And what he does unnoticed off the ball wins games and he used them words specifically so for me plowman yeah he he's he's definitely in the start start Mate, I think. he's a he cuts a really good figure he's really fit strong shredded could be a midfielder if he wanted to i guess i've heard that before <laughs> um, all right. Any other questions from uh, from anyone else? Now is the time to ask. Good one from Kano earlier. Yep. Newbies from the draft. Who, yep. we, who, who yep. right? I'm loving Josh Honey. Oof. Josh Honey, just honestly, everything you've ever wanted in a small forward and more. Love Josh Honey. Yeah, I love what I'm seeing from Josh Honey. I, I said it in the last training report. The way he moves, it's got a little bit of Josh Dunkley to it. The way he moves, it's just rough and ruggedy and. And, um, yeah, I really like the size on him. Um, Ramsey's showing a little bit. He's got um, he's got that he's got that um, Cade Simpson type running pattern, uh, selling the candy. Uh, I like what I'm seeing from him. The footwork's good. Probably got the best hair as well in the AFL competition. Yeah, it's, it's solid. It's solid. It rivals it's lit. It, it rivals Cam Paulson back in the day when he had the uh, the. Under oh, I think that was just like little floppy hair. He's like a rock star, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah I like him. Uh, I like the look of Sam Philp as well. I really genuinely believe. Like my my tune on him has changed from when I first saw him. I genuinely believe he'll play a game this year, maybe two or three. Oh yeah, I also think as well. Brody Kemp just so excited about Kemp moving forward as well i can't wait to 2021 to unleash this beast yeah he's um yeah i mean he's going to add another element to us that mate we're stacked we are stacked with talent seriously it's got to come together I, I can't wait to win nine out of the next decades flags yeah well i mean <laughs> i can't wait to be the san antonio spurs <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait. We've just got so much talent. Yeah. Just one round one to see. George Musa, good evening to you, mate. With what you've seen at training, are the boys looking faster and targeting each other better? Um, yeah, I mean, generally across the board, the skin folds are 100% improved. They're, they're a lot more leaner. Now, that doesn't mean anything, but it's a start. It's something I've it's, – it's very noticeable. They're looking a lot more athletic than what they did last year. Um, I will say this – from what I've seen at training, and I'm just being real here, it's patchy, but obviously that's training. Uh, they're not going as hard as they possibly could. They don't want to hurt each other, but it's patchy. When it's on, it's on, and then you'll get a few rough kicks and they'll need to bring it in and sort of yell at each other and 
and go again. Um, so once they do get going, it looks really good, um, but there is still the consistency to come. So that's that's just an observation of mine. And don't get me wrong, I'm the first person to get excited and, you know, Sam Walsh looks like Chris Judd and, you know, all of that. But it is patchy and we're going to need to work on that consistency. That's going to be a hallmark of who we are this year. I'm disappointed you've approached that question with common sense. And like, <laughs> I'm it. Disappointed. I mean, for me, I was impressed. There seems to be a real 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 focus on transition and moving the ball out quickly yeah. resetting quickly and that is the modern day game and that is kind of how Teague showed us he was playing last year so I'm really excited to see the evolution of this like because it does look really aesthetically pleasing doesn't it from what we've seen at training it does look like good football no it does it does it's, it's quick ball movement and I guess the quicker you move the ball the less talented you have to be in a sense because it's just, by, you know what I mean? Um, you look at Richmond, quick ball movement, how to skelter, pressure, fumbling, open space, bang, bang. Um, it's very kamikaze type. Now, obviously, yeah, the- it's very instinctive, isn't it? And I thought yeah. that was really good. It's about knowing where you are. And that's why I love that drill we saw where they closed their eyes and had to point out where each player was near them. Learning that awareness, so to me, I reckon you're going to see like a Richmond style game plan this year. I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. One more comment here from George. Given the list talent, we should have told Simo maybe should have stepped away. Yeah, look, interesting point. I always said the Simo, Daisy, Murphy contingency plan needs to be smart. I don't think you can lose two of them in one season. I think one, and if you're going to keep one, Simo's probably the one. And honestly, as it stands right now, I don't think that player who's going to replace Simpson has knocked down the door yet. So um, having him there, Simo is someone that for me, when he does get that tap on the shoulder to say, hey, we're going to go with Williamson this week or, hey, Stock is going to play this week, I feel like he's going to be the first person to you know, congratulate him and go to the VFL and do what he needs to do. So I'm not really worried about that at all. Um, and then obviously when he does move on and retire, it's going to, uh, it's going to reduce the average playing group age by – by uh, quite some margins. So, um, yeah, interesting points. Um, any last thoughts from you, Dan? No, I think I think I think Dom's. I, I think you've got a good point there, just in regards to that question. I think there is no one really, particularly at the end of last season, who you would say was knocking down the door. And I, I think it would have been a risk to if he didn't want to come on mm-hmm. to let him go without yep. that experience, because all it takes is an injury, like heaven forbid, touch wood. But Doc go down again. One of the newbies goes down. Newman goes down. We look very light. Then it only looks good at the moment yep. because we know Doc is fully fit. But as a pl- as a fan, we didn't really know, did we, how Doc was? Very true. All right, guys, uh, that's it for tonight. I'm seeing a few comments here that a few of you didn't actually get the notification that we'd be on. Um, best thing to do in that case, um, go on the actual Facebook page and you can turn on notifications. That's the best way to do it. Um, plenty of cool videos coming out this week. If you haven't checked out the player previews, do that. I had a really good chat with um, David from Carlton Pride, one of my favorite conversations of, of all the Carlton People series videos that I've done. I just, I just thought it was, it, was just, it was just a great conversation and we touched on some really good themes and issues. Um, Dan has also started looking really deeply into the analytics um, of every other team in the competition and what we need to do to beat them. So make sure you go check them out. They're all on the YouTube page. And uh, really looking forward to the coming weeks. We're going to have a practice match coming up soon. There will be an open training session there somewhere. So obviously we'll get some some training highlights. Um, So, yeah, thanks very much for your support. Make sure you're subscribed, and uh, this is going to be one hell of a year. 2020s are the years of the Carlton. Go the Boo Boys. See you guys. See you, everyone.